So let's let's dig into tonight's topic. We, we're going to be talking over the next next four Tuesdays. We're going to be talking about music that is something that DJs really need to to have in their arsenal and play uh-huh. at the proper times. Sure. With, for, with the guests of that of that era the, that would like that type of stuff, because there's a lot of DJs out there who don't have the experience. You know, you and I have got we're both the similar age, but we have completely different experiences when it comes to music. But right. there's guys who are 18 years old going out there, and they have no idea who. You know why Elvis Presley is important, or what music to play right. from Elvis Presley. So, what's odd is that if I go back and I look at, for instance, my CD collection, I have music for people who are dead. I mean, it, they're gone. Yeah. These people don't exist anymore. I have all this music from World War II, the Ink Spots, and that kind of stuff that I used to have to pull out 25 years ago. That generation's gone. They're not here anymore. So yeah. I'm not pulling that out anymore. Exactly, and that's why when I was going through the, the list today, because today we're going we're gonna to talk about the music from the 50s today. As I was going through that list, I don't. I think the only person that I saw that is still alive on on the list is uh, Little Richard. I have more than one person who's still alive on my list. Other than that, yeah, I don't. I don't believe in it. And I haven't maybe, shared my list with John yet. By the way, audience, I, I've, I would do that intentionally. I wanted it to be a little different. Yep. So, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of go through, and then once we we we've gone through, I and have I, like three people who are still alive on my list. I think really, I, maybe maybe I'm missing missing a it's couple. Okay, I went a different route, but that's what's fun about this. Yeah. So, so that's so I went through, and I, I basically picked a lot of the the popular, and I went through and picked a lot more than ten. So that way, in case Brian and I were duplicating, we could still give you guys about twenty solid tracks that could be used at your events. I did some considerable mentions as well. Nice, nice. So let's start out. Let's start out. Pick one. Let's let's chat about it and we'll start compiling our well, list. Before I even get into that, I just wanted to mention that I think as a genre for DJs, when we talk about 50s music, typically most people are actually talking about 50s and 60s. 60s music. Yeah. And you're looking at probably I don't know, music between 1954 and 1965. It all kind of had the same vibe. I mean, that's a decade right there. Yes. Rock and roll didn't get coined until 54. So otherwise, you're only looking at five years of music, 54 through 59. Um, but there is music that, you know, again, as a genre, people consider, uh, you know, into, well into the 60s uh, to be like 50s and 60s music. It's like a. there used to be a time here as a DJ way, way back when people it was like a word, 5060. They didn't even say the and part when they asked for it. You got some 5060? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll play some for you. Yep. But for the topic of conversation tonight, staying on point, I kept it well within the 50s. Yeah, and that, that was actually the difficult part as we're going through yeah. is, is, okay, I would play this song and I would follow it up with this song. And then you realize that that second song, uh, the 50s song. it was, you yeah, it, it came out in what, 62 or 63. And it's like, oh. Right. Or there's even stuff, and I don't want to blow anything on anybody's list, but. There's even stuff in the 70s that qualifies like anything from the movie Grease. It precisely. It qualifies. So you can play that in a 50s set, but that's 70s music. And, you know, sha na na and all that stuff. And there's even stuff from the Animal House soundtrack that you can play. Again, not 50s, 1979. So it gets real tricky when, when we're looking at this. But just for tonight's uh, sake of argument, again, I stayed within the 50s. And the oldest track I have is actually uh, 1953. Oh, you went so, you went back. Well, let's start with that old. Back. Let's start with your oldest track that you have then. Okay. Well, I, I kind of did this like as a one through ten kind of thing. Okay. Okay. I'm and sorry. I got my notes here. I do have some considerable mentions we can talk about later. Yeah. I actually have three songs at number ten because <laughs> they're all so similar and they're by the same guy and I didn't want him to completely occupy my charts. Yeah. The 1950s were fantastic for group active songs. So, my number 10 choice is, is a composer, a trumpet player, actually, Ray Anthony. Oh, and there yeah. are three songs I want to talk about that Ray Anthony does. One is the Chicken Dance. We all know the Chicken Dance. That's Ray Anthony's orchestra who did that. Yep. Another one is the Bunny Hop. And once in a while, you play that song. People will do the Bunny Hop. Yes. You get the right crowd. And and um and but the one i really wanted to talk about and the one that everyone should absolutely have is the hokey pokey you gotta have the hokey pokey if you're a dj and this isn't gonna just be for people who are in their 70s all right my mother is 75 she was 18 in 1959 i don't think she'd get into the hokey pokey but i do believe 
that uh, I've got, you know, I know little kids who are five and six years old who would definitely dig it. And you can oh, do yeah. the school dances and all that stuff. That's music from the 50s. That's Ray Anthony. All of those songs are from 1953. So that's Chicken Dance, Hokey Pokey, and Bunny Hop at number 10. Very cool. Very cool. That was whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, that, that was a, a great, especially for for DJs. What a great trifecta there. Right, right. And in the you know all the same year, all the same artist, and they all still get played from mobile DJs. Yeah. And again, I was playing this game within decades, so that's fifty three. Yeah. No, you went back. You went back and dug a little farther. I started going back into 50, 54, and I glanced at fifty three, sure. and it's like, oh man, there's not much there's there. Here, right. But yeah. then you think about it. It's like, when did that come out? And a lot of times when I was making songs for this list, just incidentally, before you, you tell us your next track, I thought, sure, I had a song for the 50s. It's like, oh, this is going to be number two. No, it's 63, 64. You talked about that earlier. It happened a lot. We didn't know. It really did. It really did. It totally just fit right in there. So, so the first one I want to I want to talk about um, is is uh, it was in 1959. I'm going on the other end of the 50s. Okay. This is a, a kind of a slower song. It's uh, Paul Anka's uh, "Put Your Head on My Shoulder." Is one of the. It's kind of a slower song. Um, I've I've uh, it's one that I've used at at shows a number of times over the years, and it works with that older crowd because in in a few cases when I have played that, I've had people actually say that this takes me back to my high school days where right. they would play that particular song pairing that up um with another song that had that was earth angel but uh, i didn't pull that one out for the charts but that was mention. exactly it definitely sure. definitely fit into that but that was and mm -hmm. i and i think that came out with uh, uh back to the future when yes. they when they did when they did it there yes. is, that, that's another time that these tunes just come out of nowhere when they show up in a film somewhere yeah precisely wasn't on anybody's radar and then all of a sudden everyone you know, was, you know, was asking for out. earth angel after everybody that wants it yeah. I mean, that was the case with American Graffiti and, you know, so many other films where, you know, all of a sudden it's like they're talking, they're, they're hot songs again. And they weren't really for a minute. Yeah, that it happens different. a lot. I'll okay. give you a considerable mention uh, since we're on the subject of ballads. And I'll go back. This one's a little weird. I know we're a little weird on my considerable mentions. This is not something that every DJ is going to have. But I feel like that if you have it and you get the right crowd, you're going to be a rock star. I'm talking about Piercy Face, theme from a summer place, 1959. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now that's, it's easy listening. It sounds like elevator music. If you've never heard it, you know, YouTube it or whatever, you're going to be, what are you talking about, B? This song was so hot. This was like, I don't know, what could I, what could I compare it to? This was the Ignition remix for the late 50s. This is what this was. This was this was bumping and grinding music for back then. I was just gonna say it was getting busy music. Let's let's just yes, put it, it out there. It was getting <laughs> rock and roll, and then the music of the time was just very rebellious. Everything about it was rebellious. It was unconventional. This was not rock and roll, but it was still popular. It was still a hit because it was a belly grinding song. I'll give you another interesting bit of trivia about this song, and the reason I really wanted to put it on the list was because that song was the inspiration. For another song we may talk about in a couple of weeks, and I never knew it until I watched this documentary recently. But uh, that song, if you rework it a little bit and you make it funky, is uh, "Night Fever" by the Gees. That was the inspiration for that song when they did it. Hmm. Because Barry Gibb would go on holiday with his family, and, and whenever he heard a theme from a summer place, he thought, "Good times, having fun." This is what his family listened to. This was a hot track, and he said, "Boy, that's just a feel-good song." And he talked to his uh, his uh, guy who does the synth, and he said, could you rework that into something? And he came up with Night Fever. And if you listen to him back to back, it's a trip. Interesting. It's, they're about the same. It's pretty cool. Very interesting. Okay, up to your number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Okay. Uh, not my favorite song. Uh, not one I play if, uh, just because I play it when it's requested. But I feel like that in the 1950s, if you ever talked to anybody who was a teenager in the 50s, there were uh, three kinds of people. Okay. You had Buddy Holly people. You had Elvis Presley people. And you had Jerry Lee Lewis people. You were one of the three. Yep. Okay. So my number nine is Great Balls of Fire, Jerry Lee Lewis. It's that hot rock and piano song. And I, I think it's, uh, you know, if you're going to have a Jerry Lee Lewis song, that's the one to probably play. And when did that one come out? 
That song came out in 1957. Gotcha. It was released in 57. Now it probably charted all through 58 and 59. A lot of those songs did. They would come out and they chart for three years. Exactly. I noticed that on a couple of occasions yeah. that it would be in the Hot 100 for this year, and then it was again the next year. Yeah, and way it, up there on the charts too. It, wasn't and it just came like, out early in, you know, like mid year. So it was on the right. charts well over six months both times. Yeah, there's a song on my list that that was released in the 50s and was on the charts in 1963. And I won't tell you about it till we get there. But the stuff, you know, it was just singles. People wanted it and they'd buy it. It wasn't like today where it was just this disposable stuff. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of this stuff for a while. The good stuff stuck around. So to have those good tracks is so important. What do you got for number nine, next, brother? Next is uh, from Bobby Day in 1958 with Rock and Robin. Ooh, Bobby Day. A, a upbeat, fun song that is something that, that little kids get into just because it's kind of fun and, and silly. Mm -hmm. The older guests, they, they enjoy this. It really just kind of works. <coughs> Even if people really don't know the song, right. it just works. It's got kind of that right. infectious sound. It's almost a group act of song. Very much so. Very much so. It's the kind of stuff that you can play for the elementary school and such. I mean, personally, as a DJ, I go Jackson 5 Rock and Robin, which is 70s. I mean, that's the version that, for me, is hot. Mm-hmm. And I did it with a lot of tunes. There were a lot of tunes that came out in the 50s, but in the 60s and 70s, there were alternate versions yep. by other artists or re-recordings of them that I felt like were better as mobile DJs. And, and, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, for me, I would always play the Jackson 5 version because you, you're Michael Jackson and it's a little more funky. Yeah, sure. That's me. Sure, That's and I think in Wisconsin, not almost Canada. Exactly. We're, we're up here yeah. where it's a little colder and we don't get that, you know, the modern Michael Jackson stuff. Now, speaking of what I just said, uh, this is regional stuff. John's talking about what's happening in his neck of the woods. I'm talking about what's happening in mine. As you can imagine, if you live somewhere overseas, uh, the UK, Australia, your listeners are going to look very different. Very much so. I think the, the most interesting part about a conversation like this are the things that you can agree with us on, where it's just universal. It doesn't matter where you live. You know, this is going to be hot, where you live and where we live. Like, I don't have any Cliff Richard on my list because he didn't really hit my radar uh, until like the late 70s, mm -hmm. early 80s. But Cliff Richard is an institution. He is Elvis Presley in, uh, in the UK. Yeah. But then Elvis Presley is something even bigger than Elvis Presley is here. Elvis Presley is royalty in the UK. And everywhere else in the world I've ever traveled, they ask about Elvis and Graceland. Uh, they're, they're crazier about Elvis than we are, which I will get to later in my list, by the way. Very good. Very good. We are up to your number eight. Number eight. Uh, I, I, again, I'm going different on this. I'm not just thinking about rock and roll. I'm not just thinking about rockabilly. I'm thinking about music from the 50s. And another group active song, a sing-along, great for college students, great for even the emo crowd because of the movie Beetlejuice, Harry Belafonte's Deo, the Banana Boats. Oh, yes. Number eight. So... You know, came up in Beetlejuice. I know that movie is, what, 26 years old now or something? Very much so. I know. But it's still a hot film. And people see that movie and they like that song. And that's when that song kind of came out of, you know, the, you know, the, the archives. It wasn't on anybody's radar until Tim Burton put it in the film. And I think to this day, I still get requests from it to this day. Very much you know, so. Sometimes it's end of night. It's not like for dancing. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's sing along. It's just a drinking song. It's, it's just a cool one to have in your arsenal. It's the uh, Banana Boat song, aka Deo by Harry Belafonte. Yep, that was that was a, a very very popular one. That kind of fits in with the with my next one of of yeah. uh, Tequila. Ooh, by the Champs. By the Champs. Yep, that Latin flavor. That was was a very similar concept with that sing along song, played at a specific intentional time. It can work very, very well. It's not something that is the, the you know isn't going to be the anchor of a dance set usually, but it has its moments. And speaking of Tim Burton, that one turned up in another Tim Burton film, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That's right. He was doing the tequila dance on the bar. That's right. He was doing. And to this dance. day, when I play that song, people do that dance. Yeah, you know, they're up there. Even little kids do it. It's just something they know. Tim Burton, he influenced our fifties library. Who knew, right? <laughs> exactly. We thought it was all about Johnny Depp. You know, no other stuff too. Not just Batman. <laughs> oh. But what that song has a Latin flavor to it. That's something else interesting about it. I bet you it's one of the first pop songs in the U.S. with a real Latin flavor. And it's not just the, the name tequila. I think it goes deeper than that. I think it's the percussion of that song. 
that was probably like a wild tune when it came out was that, that? Was a little racy song pardon was that before or after uh la bamba uh tequila was uh, 1958 so that would have been after i don't know what time i don't know when la bamba came out because i thought i thought la bamba was out about the same time as buddy holly had his which would have been 19 you know, 1958 too so yeah it could have all been about yeah. the same time You're right you know it's kind of it's racy stuff regardless but richie valens i mean Richie Valens didn't particularly sound, uh, you know, like he was doing Latino stuff until he did the song La Bamba. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. Oh, Donna was just a, a nice pop song. But yeah, tequila is no joke. You know, that, that's that got Latin flavor. Oh, right very there. much so. Very much so. so. Across the board with that one. Yeah. Cool. Okay, what do you got next? We're up to seven? Is it my turn? I think so. Uh -huh. Uh Love and Marriage, Frank Sinatra. Oh, and that song came out in 1955, and it got really hot, as you know, John, when the television show Married with Children came out. Oh, yes. They, they would play it at the intro of it. And it's weird, because if you watch reruns and syndication, they don't play that song anymore, because they must have lost the... <laughs> right, <you know, laughs> It was too expensive to play it at the beginning of, of every uh, syndicated uh, you know, version of Married with Children. But if you go back and watch it on Netflix or whatever, you're still getting... Love and marriage, and you can do all kinds of neat stuff with that song at a wedding as a mobile DJ. Oh yeah, yeah. But haven't haven't and played that one in a long time. Yeah, and it's a fun one to throw <laughs> on. You can do it during a uh, cocktail or dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fun. Just you don't have to put it on for, for dancing necessarily, but it's just the whole attitude of it. And it gets a chuckle because of Married with Children. That's why it gets the chuckle. Yeah, it was just a nice song before that, but now mm -hmm. it's like campy and ironic or whatever because of, of the TV show. So yeah, that that's that's. That's on my list for sure. That's a big one from the 50s. Again, not just doing the rock and roll, doing the whole... The whole thing. gamut. You're yeah. going across the board. My number seven is uh, from Johnny Horton, The Battle of New Orleans. Ooh, it was probably yeah. one of the biggest sing-along songs for the longest time. Did I hit one of yours? No. I was going to say, did I finally get a you know? No, it's not even on my radar, honestly. Oh, it wasn't even on a radar. Oh, this was a, and this could be, this could be more of a regional thing, but yeah. in the, in the, the early days of, uh, you know, our, our late eighties and early nineties, the kind of rural area here that sing along to the battle of new Orleans was mm -hmm. so big. I would, I would almost correlate it to, to the scale of what piano man has been in okay. the DJ world with that type of right. a sing along. It was quite. We got a, a lot of miles off that, and that was that was one of the one of the songs on one of the discs that was only on a couple of a uh, couple of discs. Um, wow, and that stuff was hard to find way back. It was. It was incredibly hard. And when we found it, we were like, "Woohoo!" Here we go. Yep. It's not like today where it's like, "Oh, well, I'll just if Amazon doesn't have it, I'll look on iTunes. iTunes, yeah. iTunes doesn't have it, I'll look on." Uh. You know, back then, you had to actually go shopping. Exactly. I mean, how many times did you actually take a trip? To Minneapolis, St. Paul, just to buy music. I oh my goodness did. gracious! We did that probably at least a month, once a month. And how far of a drive was that? It was a couple of hours one way. Yeah, we had St. Cloud with Chicago. Yeah, I we had St. Cloud that was about an hour away, and we'd hit that weekly. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have to go down to, because they had some music shops in the cities that had compilations and things we just couldn't get here. Right, and then you get those tunes like midweek that were must-haves for some reason or another. You didn't know about them last week, but you got to have them this week. Yeah. You got to go shopping and yeah. you got to get in a car and drive and go do it. So, yeah, just mentioning that, it's making me think a tune like that, you look at every compilation, you just take to the compilation section, and you're like, okay, these are all 50s. I'm going to read each and every one of these. And I probably have eight songs on every one of these, but if it's got that one song that I want, I'm buying it. Yep. That happened numerous times. Yeah. This all worked for me too. Yeah, I spent a lot of money that way, but it was fun. I learned a lot about music. I got stuff I probably wouldn't normally get. For sure, so, technology is great, and it's also kind of uh, yeah, it's it's taken away. Yeah, it has. They taken away in many ways. Uh, are we up to six? Or? I think so. Uh, boy, where was I? What was my last one? Okay, yeah. Um, uh, here we go. This is another song that was always popular, but it happened in a movie. The movie just celebrated its 25th year anniversary. It's been kind of a big deal. So I think the song is going to make a, a resurgence again. And that would be Johnny B. Good by Chuck Berry. Mm. That was in Back to the Future. Yes. That was another one from Back to the Future. He talked about that earlier with Earth Angel. So, you know, he, he just picked up his guitar and started playing it. And 
uh, at the school dance or whatever. Mm-hmm. Good rock and roll song. Really good rock and roll song. It really is. And I think it's under actually an underutilized one because that was it one is. that we would mix in because you can mix that in with uh, a couple of the songs I'm sure we're going to talk about here as we get towards the top. It could it's go in. backbeat. There's a certain backbeat. Yeah. Doom, 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 yeah, doom, exactly. And, it's, and a lot, the hottest songs have that backbeat. It's just, a, it's, it's almost like a, a disco in a way where it's just almost monotonous, mm-hmm. but it's, it's monotonous uh, kind of in the background. It's not yeah. monotonous like up front. So those are the most danceable tunes. And those are the ones that have aged the best for, I think, dance floors for me anyway. Are those of that backbeat to them, and that definitely has it. It's the first one on my list that has it. Well, because Great Balls of Fire doesn't have it. No, it, it not consistently, and you throw out the song anyway. Okay, my next one is coming from Buddy Holly with Peggy Sue. Ooh, Buddy. Which was, it doesn't quite have the the excitement. It doesn't have the the energy of of. Uh, what you know the chuck berry and, and some of the others it's it's real close but it's it's close it's a deceivingly close i think is probably a way to dis- to to describe it what a lot of people don't understand about buddy holly is that that guy that guy was like the david bowie of the 50s he was just like real avant-garde mm-hmm. and he did things that no one had done before yes and you li- if you listen to his greatest hits album because i had, i'd purchased that and he had a, a repertoire of, of music. Uh, why? Well, there's 52s on his greatest hits. Yeah. The Buddy Holly collection is huge. <laughs> so, yeah, it's surprisingly so. And it's like, goodness. And he, how, how many years did he perform? He was only performing for a handful um, of years. Like three years, I think. 59, he was gone. Yeah. That was, it. So, that was it for him. Uh, him and Richie Valens and the Big Bopper, they all went the same plane crash. And I believe that was 59. Yeah. yeah and I think that well, tonight was their last, their last concert. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah, way, I don't know, years North and years Dakota ago. or something. Really Iowa. Oh, was it Iowa? Iowa, oh. south of us, yeah. We talked to, they were talking about that earlier. So, so yeah, that was uh, number six. So we're up to number five. Well, my number five is Tequila by the Champs. We already talked about that. Okay. 1958. So I did, I did it's hit one. My top, it's like I'm doing my top five countdown of the hot ones. Yeah. And that's where it lands for me. It, it's that hot. It lands at number five. Okay. Um, my my next one is I wanted to go right down here. The coasters with the Akadiak from 1958. Oh yeah, I forgot that, about that. One. That is one that that I back and this is again where it mixes in with a different song. Is I will I will come out of. Uh, something with do Wah diddy and uh-huh. then going into yakety yak and it really sets up a nice feel and a nice flow but that's boy oh boy that's that's a song that i've i still use and use very successfully today at weddings and it turned up in a movie um i think it was twins with oh, uh, jane devito and arnold schwarzenegger arnold schwarzenegger was seeing it he was walking around. It's funny to hear Arnold Schwarzenegger singing Yakety Yak. Don't talk that. Yep, yep, Pretty no, confident no. it was twins. Yeah, I think you're right now that you mention it. Yeah. Oh. But it's a jam, and it hasn't been a narrator for a long time. I'll probably put it on a list somewhere, and I'll, I'll squeeze it in there somewhere, because that is a really good song. I forgot all about it. Yeah. So thanks for that, John. Yeah. Uh, four, I think we're up to. Ooh, four. I got Hound Dog by Elvis Presley. Do you have any other Elvis above that? Nope. Okay, so we we should really because he had so many huge hits. He did. Uh, what I will say about Elvis though was that um, he had a lot of really good hits in the sixties. Yep. So I was real selective about what I grabbed for this list because the sixties. If we do like some kind of expansion frat rock thing on this or something, there will be several Elvis tunes that that we hit there. Yeah. That were charting or released in the sixties. But yeah, Hound Dog is, I don't know, like I said, you're either a, a Buddy Holly, a Jerry Lee Lewis, or an Elvis. Most of the Buddy Holly people don't speak up anymore. The Jerry Lee Lewis's do sometimes. The Elvis people won't go away. They are there, you know, yes. It's like Night of the Living Dead. They're still here. Why are you still here? We were supposed to have buried you a long time ago. No, they're still here. So they expect more than one Elvis song. So, uh, I, I, you know, Hound Dog is one you definitely want to have with you. There's another one uh, that I'll mention next, but uh, that, that's, that's a big one. That's a big one you got to have. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I'm counting here, and in the 50s, Elvis hit number one for a, number of, a period of weeks with one, two, three, four, five 
five songs that were that hit number one and were there anywhere from seven to eleven weeks or something like that just huge yeah no one was no one was close close and like i said you know if you go to england they're still insane about them when i was in australia uh, they were insane about elvis they'd ask about elvis the people my age who i considered like really cool were still into elvis oh yeah well i have elvis it's like, what do you have elves for? That's for old ladies. No, no, no. He's cool. He's cool. Yeah, is that something? But like, you know, it was always something the old ladies liked where I lived. So. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Let's see. My num number four. I'm going to go with another slow song. This is going with the Everly Brothers. All I have to do is dream. Uh, I yeah, like that. Really it's stuff. a a a really kind of just a sweet uh, kind of yeah. a belly rubbing song that again appeals to that older crowd. It's just slow right. enough, but yet there's enough of a vocal. It just it really is has been a very successful slow song for me. Nice. No, that's a good one. That's for sure. A not really nice song. And there, you hear a lot more of that kind of stuff when you get in the early 60s. There's Very much a so. lot of that in the early 60s. Very much talk so. About next week or something. Yep, yep. That's a, that'll be our next week. So, I, I, let me just interrupt you real quick. How yeah. many people are watching this anyway? Um, we've been bouncing be between, uh, we're at, uh, right now I'm seeing, I'm seeing Eight, four. Nine, no, we, we've been in the 40s. Three. We've been in the 40s for the whole show. All seven viewers. That's so cool. Thank you, all seven of you, for, for tuning in for this. I appreciate it. And, I and shared it on my Facebook, hoping to get some traffic. So. Yeah, we've been... Uh, yeah, we just had... I'm just checking to see if we had any questions, because we've been so busy talking music. Yeah, yeah, even, yeah. Uh, What's going on? I haven't, I haven't even going? checked. We're good. We're good. They're just... Uh, folks are okay. kind of commenting on Elvis and where he's been in and, right. and different things. If there's so, anybody from overseas watching, I mean, please you know, chime in. What's going on with Elvis Presley over there? I mean, you I know, mean, like I said, I traveled to Australia and I couldn't believe it. Young people were like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. And, and something else that's interesting, too, if you look at, like, the UK charts on things, things that, like, charted in 1955, all of a sudden, for some reason, just jump back on the pop charts in the mid-70s. Yes. Uh, I don't know why. We don't do that. Here. Yeah. It happens there. And I think Elvis does this. Cliff Richard also does it. We talked about the Cliff Richard UK thing. That's just weird. Uh, he, he's he's like he's like the Elvis of the parallel universe, but he's he's there and he's still around and doing things. But uh, yeah, if you're from uh, somewhere else, chime in and let us know what's going on with with the music where you live because that'll also be something interesting to talk about. Up to number three, number three, uh, another Elvis song, Jailhouse Rock. That is probably the definitive Elvis Presley song. That's the song that you think of whenever a guy with sideburns walks into the room. It's da da boom, boom. That's the tune. If you have one Elvis song, that is your Elvis song. Jailhouse Rock by Elvis Presley. Uh, from a movie called Jailhouse Rock, starring, guess who? Elvis Presley. And he made great films. Boy, they were really something else. <laughs> there was no sarcasm there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, they didn't have music videos back then, so they did a whole movie. Yep. <laughs> it didn't matter if you could act or not. So that's ah, almost the way to come and see it. So yeah, uh, Yo House Rock, man, that's my number three. I'm going to do one more slow one here, and this will end my slow ones because this is this is one that uh, from Johnny Mathis. Chances are. Oh, was that's a nice song. A nice, a nice song. Again, it's it's that that feel and and. Over the years, I have gotten more tips, and I've gotten more, more people coming up and asking for cards by playing quality, quality older, slow romantic tunes. Nice. So these are these are songs that have been very very effective for me. And Johnny Mathis, you know, it's, it's he was at with the women at that age. They all, yeah, yeah he was he was uh, he was a uh, 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 an eye catcher for them. So I got a Mathis tune that I think is the '60s. I'd have to look it up. I think it's early 60s. If it's 50s, I rob myself for not mentioning it here. And that would be Misty. I think that's later. I think it's 60s. Yeah, I believe that's so. That's my go-to Mathis tune. Just just for talking about Mathis. That, mm -hmm. That's my, always my go-to Mathis tune. And it works really well. It's a nice song. Mm -hmm. But anything the guy does is beautiful. He's got a beautiful voice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, good stuff to have. Up to number two. <sighs> number two is special. The reason number two is special is because I actually like the song. And, and that might sound weird to you, but I typically don't enjoy a lot of music that was recorded before I was born. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, these songs, I don't hate them, but I wouldn't jam them at home. Yep. I wouldn't own it and say, oh, I feel like listening to this. I never feel like listening to anything I've talked about in, in, in this. 
uh, this whole list. Uh, but this song, however, is special. And, and uh, this is definitive rock and roll. This is from 1954. And uh, it, it's Bill Haley in the comics, Rock Around the Clock. Rock Around the Clock was the title track to the TV show Happy Days for like the first two seasons. But it wasn't the Bill Haley in the comics version, but it didn't matter. It sounded just like it. Yes. And yeah, you cannot lose with this tune. If someone ever says to you, play something from the 50s, and they're that big, just play Rock Around the Clock. Mm -hmm. And you've done your job. This is the 50th song to own. Uh, 1954, believe it or not. This is what kicked it all off. If you look back and you think about it, this was the tune that got everybody's attention right away. Uh, it's that one right there. Very much so. That is, that's been a staple in our, our wedding shows, really, since we got the disc that had that on. <laughs> It's yes. been there. And you had to have the right version of it, and that's something else I want to talk about. There are so many of these songs where there were alternate versions of them for one reason or another. Back in the old days, if you wanted to do a song that was a little longer, or if you wanted a version that was a little longer for the re for the album or whatever, you went and re-recorded the whole song. You didn't just remix a little part of it. Mm -hmm. It was a brand new version of the song. They did that up through the 80s with 12-inch singles. This the single version of Rock Around the Clock that you want. There's another version out there that I see a lot and I don't know if it was on the album or what. Um, it just doesn't quite have that, that backbeat I'm talking about. It's mm. not as smooth. So, so the one that, that I dig is, is the 1954 single, the one mm -hmm. that charted, which is, uh, yeah. Yeah, the Billboard. Right it was on the Billboard discs. That was one of those That's the one. that That's uh, the we one burned want. up an awful, awful lot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nothing else to do. Let's see. Um, next one was yeah. was uh, from 1957. With uh, this is one that I tie in because I was going to in my last three rock around the clock was one of my last uh, ones. Um, the crickets though with that'll be the day. Ooh, yeah, little... buddy Holly. Wow, I didn't have one on my list, and you've done two. Uh, yeah, well, this right? uh, this was actually um, the one that hit, that charted was not the buddy Holly one. It was just the crickets themselves, which which would have been what pre before he went solo. No, it was always Buddy Holly and the crickets. Because I, I was looking that up to see if it was, and it did not say anything about Buddy Holly being involved with that that one. That's weird. The crickets are still around, but that was Buddy Holly's, you know, the well, band. Well, yeah, I, the, I think one died recently, uh, but there's two crickets that are still up. There were three crickets, but yeah, it was Buddy Holly and the crickets. Yeah, uh, so I was wondering about that if that was the case, and it's like yeah, mm. it's the Buddy Holly jam. But yeah, you know, so Holly yeah, Buddy. I mean, that, they might have called it the crickets, but it's Buddy Holly and the crickets. Is what it is. Okay, yeah, but that was that's again yeah. another one that, would, that kind of like Van Halen featuring David Lee Roth. It's like it's still just Van Halen. David <laughs> yeah, Roth was there when it was Van Halen. That was just featuring David Lee Roth because it's 1984, and you got to jump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, what are we up to? Number? Are we up to? Uh, We're number one. We are. Yeah. Should we go through some considerable missions before we go to one? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. What do you got for us? Okay, I gave you one of them, and I got a few more. And it's just an artist. And the reason I'm mentioning this artist is because if I don't, he'll probably come to my house and yell at me because he's that kind of guy. And that's Little Richard. The Little Richard's got some tunes in the 50s that you should probably have. And and to me, it's a trifecta. Uh, it's Good Golly Miss Molly from 1958. It's Long Tall Sally from 1956. Uh, which, if you go back again, the movie thing kind of does the re resurgence of these things. Like, my generation will know that song because of the movie Predator. Because that's the song they're singing as they're coming in on the helicopter to, to go do whatever they were going to do military wise. Uh, guy, everybody was, uh, was at, uh, um, oh, that, that guy, he was your governor for a while. Yeah, uh, Ventura. Ventura's yeah, in that movie. And I think uh, uh, the dude who was, uh, I can't remember these actors' names. The dude who's Apollo Creed was in that movie. Oh. Uh, whatever his name is. And yeah. of course Schwarzenegger. But yeah, that, that's the song they're listening to as they're coming in on that Apache helicopter or whatever it was. Uh, that's 1956 hot tune. Good one to have. And then Tutti Frutti, which is like the staple Little Richard tune that's from 1955. Mm -hmm. So if you're gathering a 50s library, I, I would say definitely at least grab those three Little Richard songs. They're really, really a good tool to have. Very. And that's it for my considerable mentions. That's all I had for considerable mentions. I had a couple. A um, couple I wanted to point um, talk about. Uh, Splish Splash from Bobby Darren. Oh yeah, yeah, right on. Very, very. Uh, 
very uh, useful. Uh, very we mentioned happy days. Oh, very much so. I that's, think of that. I think happy days, and that's seventies. That's our generation. Almost. Exactly, but uh, many of these came came out in that because yeah. the show was based from that time. Uh, speaking of, of songs that that became popular later, this is when uh, uh, Willie and the Hand Jive came out. Yeah, and of yeah. course, it was re- it had its resurgent later, but that was right, um, with, with Greece. With Greece. And uh, Sean and I did it, I think. Born to Hand Jive was the one they did. And I think uh, Sean and I, I think, in some cases, did so many of those songs so much better than the originals. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. It's like, oh, just stay in the night, shout is a version I'm going to play, shout. That's just what it is. It's just how it is. That's how it's going to be. And this is one, actually, Brian, I, I've seen, I've had requests, and I don't get it. Uh, Bobby Darren's Mac the Knife. What's the appeal? Yeah. What's the appeal I to that one? Was in a movie? But people really dig it. They yeah. dig that in the same way that, and, and again, considerable mentions here, people dig um, Volari and they dig uh, That's the Mm-hmm. You know? it's, it's almost Dean Martin kind of, it's Bobby Darren who does Mac the Knife. But it's almost in that same category as those Italian crooners. Yeah. That, like I, Sinatra I, or whatever. I don't know, people dig it. And I'd get it once in a while too. It's kind of a dark tune if you listen to it. Not yeah. a murderer. Oh, very much so, very much so. But yet, there are people who are like requesting it, yeah. and in the similar sequence as as requesting some Sinatra and things. So, right, good right. point, good it's point. Right there. With all My this. number one song was uh, "Rock Around the Clock," but a second song that is also that that we use an awful lot is yeah. uh, "At the Hop" from Danny yes. and the Juniors. Danny and the Juniors, and it's got that da 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 da, and that's the fun stuff that yep. ages well. You can play it. At the sock hop at the church, you can play it. Actually, you can play it at like the elementary school dance sometimes because the kids still know it. Or a lot of them do. It's a good one. It's a really good one. Yeah, yeah, very much. So there's just a, a lot of good things. But it was, as, as you mentioned earlier, Brian, difficult to stay within that boundary of 19 <laughs> in the 50s because we had five years, really, maybe five and a half years to work with. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something about my number one. Because I'm going to build this up. Because this is good. Yep. Okay. All right. As I was researching this, and I put research in it, I just didn't want to throw stuff against the wall. I wanted dates, I wanted facts. Yep. Before I was going to present this. As I was researching this, I looked at the Mobile Beat Top 200. And it blew my mind that I only found one song on it from the 1950s. I thought I had found three. And then I started looking at the dates. Yep. And I only found one. And the weirdest part about it is, it was well into the 100s. It wasn't even in the top 50 or the top 100. It was into the 100s. And then to take it a step further on Kapow, it's barely a 50s song. It's barely. It was released in 1959. But it charted from 1960 through 1963. It was still on the charts. And I mean, way up there, the top 10, top 15 of the year it charted because it was that hot now this is the first song that the people talk about that not only was scandalous parents freaked out when they heard this but it was the first song that had a dance that you could do by yourself before that it was all waltzes you did it together you know that kind of stuff but this tune you could do you didn't need a partner you could do it all by yourself and then of course is chubby checkers the twist now, Chubby Checker is a play off of Fats Domino. Fats Domino did a lot of bluesy piano stuff in the 50s, and that was hot. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it aged very well for a dance crowd. So they thought, well, Fats Domino, Fat Chubby Domino Checker, Chubby Checker, here we go. And uh, there's the tune. And, and again, there are alternate verses of this. I got a version I like to play. Exactly. But, but that is the tune. And I will tell you that I play this tune every time I do a wedding reception. I guarantee you I play this song. And although it's 116 on the Mobile Beat Top 200, again, I play it all the time. It, I don't care if people ask for it or not. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't care. Those lists are really good sometimes. Sometimes they're deceiving. Very much Because so. although no one asks for it, no one requests it, I get a full dance floor for that song every single time I play it. And I bet you I play it. If I miss a wedding here and there, it's very unusual. Maybe one or two a year I don't play it, but normally I always play it. And I play it early, and it brings them out, and they dance. Sure. And it's not just the old people. 
it's the young people. And when we're talking about trying to play music as mobile DJs, we want to play songs that appeal to the white variety uh, of the audience. Oh, for sure. So if I'm playing a song that's just going to appeal to your 85 year old, you know, Aunt Bertha, what good is this really doing? She's happy, but everyone else cleared the floor. Or if I play something that she digs and, you know, the five year old kid digs and the teenager digs and, you know, the, the, uh, uh, a Gen X person digs, and then you've got something, and that is definitely one of those songs. The Twist, Chubby Checker, my number one, and it's barely a 50 song. Yeah, barely, because I was going to say, exactly, it charted in the 60s. I was looking at that one, too. <laughs> yeah, barely. And, and and it was almost cheating to put it on the list, but it was almost criminal not to. Exactly, yeah, because it was released, and that's, I, was, I was going by the charting, but yeah, it's it's but such the, a Yeah, and the reason state. I really wanted to get it on the list, too, is because a lot of people had recorded it before Chubby Checker, like in 55 and 56, and it was still hot. So when people were doing the slack cops, they were hearing this song. Mm -hmm. It wasn't this version of the song, but they were still hearing it in the 50s. So for me, it was a crime not to put it on the list. It was. It definitely had a presence in the 50s. Yeah. Uh, whether much. or not it was his recording or not, I mean, it might have been like, oh, Christmas time, it dropped. Now people bought it. Now it's charting the first week of January 1960. Doesn't matter. It's still a fifty song. We get it on the damn list. But yeah, that, that was hot. <laughs> and it's important. You gotta have it. So that's what I got, man. That's what I got for you. For yeah. No, that's that's great, uh, Brian. We'll have to we'll have to have you. Um, I'll have you send that over because we want to post that in the description. Uh, we'll post both of the sure. lists and such. We'll put them down there so you guys can go there, refer to that. For those of you who are younger and and aren't haven't done much, this might be a good kind of a starting point for you to uh, have an idea of what to play when somebody's asking for some of the oldies music. Sure. Of course, oldies music now, they're referring to the 80s as oldies. It is. It is, John. We are who we are, man. We're we are who we are. <laughs> but you know, it's the, the, you know, 50s music has an appeal. Like I had mentioned, you can play the bunny hunt. You can play all that Ray Anthony stuff at any elementary school party, and they're going to react. They're going yeah. to dig it because it's group active, and they know it. And then they're going to bring that into... You know, their teens and their twenties as they go out to other parties. So it's totally cool to have this stuff and play it. It's like timeless. The twist is timeless. You're always gonna know this song. Rock around the clock, you're always gonna know that one. Yep. I don't know if everyone's always gonna know some of the other songs on my list, but those are big and they're always everyone's gonna just know what they are. The eighties music's like that too. It's really weird because I have an eighteen year old daughter. That's her stuff. That's what she prefers to listen to is eighties music. Yeah, is that something? It, yeah, I, I, did, I didn't do that, by the way, because when my daughter and I are spending time, typically I'm listening to, believe it or not, EDM in mm -hmm. the car. We always have. It's either been like British Top 40 that I get off like the now UK CDs when she was tiny. But since I've had XM, it's, it's EDM. She's not listening. I, I'm not influencing her on, on 70s or 80s music or 60s music. The kids like the monkeys and the Beatles. I don't know where this is coming from. But... <laughs> I mean, the internet's a trip because people yeah. aren't just doing whatever spoon-fed to them through the radio. They're checking out their own stuff and seeing what they like. Yeah, for sure. It's my understanding that her generation is absolutely insane. They think the safety dance was like the number one song of the 80s. It's interesting. They think that was like like the biggest tune. Everybody went to the Midland Out House concert to, to hear that one song, you know? And it wasn't. It was No, it was a one-hit wonder in the summer of 83. And it didn't, yeah, it didn't chart all. There's many songs that didn't Hardly chart that all. well. Canadian act. It, yeah. I loved it, but yeah, it wasn't around for very long. Yeah, they were kind of a flash in the pan, but you know, it's the t the tainted cell cell uh, or tainted yeah, love from soft cell. Yeah, there's another one. You know, yes. it has more of a life now than it did then. Yes, yeah, hot stuff. And that's what's so interesting about what we do. You yeah. got to follow these trends too. You got to see what these kids like and, and listen to them when they ask for stuff. Sometimes I think they're kidding with me. They're, they're joking around. There was a friend of mine who who uh, was out in California, and he was asked to DJ at an Indian reservation. Mm -hmm. And he went there, and these were kind of some rough-looking guys, you know, the way they were dressed and things like that. So he threw on hip-hop. They didn't do anything. About 45 minutes later, one of them came up and said, you any Elvis? I like, sure. Yeah, I'll play some Elvis. And the place went crazy. They were about 50s music, 50s rock and roll. Right. And this was just a couple of years ago. And these were young kids. These were kids in their teens. But at the reservation, this is what they heard. Right. And this is what they like. That's what they So right. you never know. Yeah. It's, it's just cool to have all the stuff and be ready, be prepared at all times. You never know what direction you're going to have to go in. Yeah. People ask for one thing and they get something else. Yeah. And the twist of being at 116 on the Mobile B Top 200, which is criminal, by the way. 
<laughs> I, I, I don't like that at all. It doesn't make any sense. It's very misleading. This is the best song ever. Yeah, it, it, when that's you, not true. The best song ever is "Want to Be" by the Spice Girls. I won't lie. <laughs> Close Runner, a party in the USA by Miley Cyrus, and I'm not even kidding. I love those songs, mm-hmm. and I will play the hell out of those songs until people tell me to stop. Yeah, exactly. There's there's you money songs. They get a good reaction. They make me happy. I enjoy them. They but. enjoy them, and we make money playing them because there's just some songs that, when it makes the crowd happy, we. We make money and we're happy too. What is there anything else that's on your radar, like from from the the genre of fifties? Let's just talk about it as a genre. Is there anything that just comes off the comes off uh, the top of your head that you feel like is a must, even if it creeps in in the sixties a little well, bit? You, you mentioned you mentioned earlier Fats Domino, yes, and that again going back when we were watching Happy Days, and Richie would always be singing. Uh, that had on a couple of occasions a, a resurgence for me over the years. I've had yeah. I've had people pull that and say, Hey, do you have any fats domino? You remember that That's song that, 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 that one guy sang in that T V show? <laughs> right. I mean I I've heard that one. So when you mentioned Fats Domino and you were talking happy days, it's like, Oh yeah. That was yeah. that kind of fit together. Yeah, fats fats domino, more bluesy. I think you can totally get it with all of this stuff, like you hear it like car shows and things like that, and you can yeah. totally get away with that. Yeah, I, I do have in my notes, and I didn't mention it. The the crazy part about fifties music: if you ever get in a situation where they only want fifties music, the weird part about fifties music is they're very short songs. Yes, I think someone mentioned that they're just incredibly short. <laughs> they're <laughs> two minutes. They're like well under three, like three minutes and twenty or two minutes and twenty seconds, kind of short. There's nothing over three minutes. A three-minute song would be, like, epic. I think there's one that we used to play an awful lot that was, like, a minute 54. Yeah. So, the the point is, is that, you know, if you can imagine, like, typically, when I'm doing a six-hour wedding, I figure I play about 60 songs. About. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine playing, like, 30 songs an hour? I mean, if they're, like, under two minutes, if they're that short. Like, they're all Ramon songs. They're just, boom, done. Yep. So, if you get a gig... Where they want that stuff, have a lot of it, because you're going to have to play a lot of it, just because there's no extended remix of Tutti Frutti. You get what you get. So yes, and have he, a lot of this stuff. He was he was a a great, but it was quick. Yeah, uh, but then that's where I think you know extending into the sixties is so important, and hopefully we can talk about that you know at least week. briefly on the next show. Yeah, because there's so much more that fits in to this genre as mobiles, mobile DJs. Uh, you know, that, that, that's definitely worth having. You can get away with playing a song that was recorded in 1954 back to back with a song recorded in 1965. 11 year difference, but it doesn't matter. It's still the same era. Yeah, very much so. In the minds of, well, I think as you were pointing out earlier, we can push into the 70s and it's still in the minds of a lot of people the same era now. Right. Well, you know, it was all this, uh, you know, we're reminiscing about kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I believe Animal House, they were talking about. Uh, a, a college, uh, something about the, uh, it was like the class of 64, perhaps. And then I know that Greece was supposed to be 59. Yep. I'm pretty, well, I don't know, but I think it, it is. It was about I there, think, yeah. I think Greece too was supposed to be the class of 60. So that's the 50s. So that was all resurgence. Happy Days, of course, they used mostly the original tracks in that, but you heard a lot of that. So like you said, Blueberry Hill and Yakety Yak and tons of stuff. Uh, Back to the Future, a lot of tunes came up. It's neat. Pop culture, you got to follow it because this is where these resurgences do pop up every once in a while. Very much so. They don't so. talk about dude. I, you just get me going. I don't want to shut oh, up. Oh, that's, that's good. We, that's we why need I to... do like four minute videos because I can shut up. I can say it and shut up. <laughs> well, we got to wrap up. An hour. Yeah, we gotta, we'll have to, we got to wrap things up for tonight, Brian. Um, okay. Next week, though. We'll be doing yes. '60s, and I don't. I truthfully, is looking at it. When you look at the top, the the numbers of songs in the top 500 of all time, the bulk of those songs on the top 500 are from the '60s. And you know that one. I'm gonna have to really take my time on that one. That's gonna be. This will be a much more difficult one, and I I don't even know. I think I'll have a conversation with you between now and then on this because <laughs> you got you got rock. You got Motown. Yeah. You got all that flat rock stuff, extension of the 50s. You have a lot of things going on here. Yeah, there so are just to, so much. To just 
you know, take it all and, and wrap it into a decade is almost unfair. I, I, exactly. That's what I'm, I'm kind of thinking. We'll have to figure a way to handle break that. Break down a couple of different categories and maybe a top 10 of like three or four different 60s music categories. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out because we want to give sure. you guys a, a tool that you can use when you're going yeah. out and doing your weddings. And that's really the, what this is about. You know, a couple of, couple of guys who've been there and played a lot of music over the years and some things work, some things don't and trying to share that yeah. experience. Yeah, but it's always good to have stuff. I mean, you know, it's sure. always, just in case, you may never play it, but if someone does say, hey, do you have, mm, there you go. Yep, exactly. It's about being a Boy Scout and being prepared sometimes. Yeah, that's a big part of it. So next week, we will be back Tuesday night. Gang, if you have any, any questions, comments, please put those down in the description below this video. We're going to be separating these videos, by the way. So if you're watching it tonight, we're going to be separating it into a shorter video. And please go to that one, which will be up tomorrow. That's when we'll have you do the questions and things because the big one here tonight will only be the first section because we're going to divide everything up. Tuesday we'll be back. We'll be doing it. I think again at. Uh, I think we're still we're going to do it again at nine o'clock central. So sure. that works out for you, Brian. Great. Yeah. And then we'll uh, we'll go and talk talk more music. Cool. I like talking music. That sounds great. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much for ladies and gentlemen. This is Brian Red, who is a a. One of the ADJ guys that we talked to about ADJ gear, a well, mobile DJ, I'm, uh, among sort of things. Yeah, we, and we, we, he's we, he's yeah. a, a jack of all trades, and and a and he does auto repair. Yeah, actually, I do. <laughs> 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 um, but that, again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. This is John Young with the Disjockey News and Disjockey News TV. Good night. <laughs>